Good morning. My name is Asimar Hernandez, and I just want to thank uh, you board members of Campesinos Sin Fronteras for joining us today. And I'm John Howard, an attorney from Tucson, Arizona. Good morning, Rafael Tapia. I am an employee of Partnership with Native Americans, and I work with tribal communities around Arizona. Quickly, I want to share, I, according to my status, I am a fourth generation Arizona, and my grandmother, at 11 years old, walked with her two older sisters, not much older than her, about 400 miles to get here to the United States. So this topic is very near and dear to my heart. So H2A, as you see, you can see on the board here, why, why do we want this? There's a, currently a situation in our boards, as you may well know, of asylum seekers coming over to the United States. But there's lack of education on what their options are and what they can do to come over and actually start making money without having to cross illegally and risk their lives. As we go through this, we'll give you some examples that, that we've seen and why it's important to Yuma County and the San Luis region. So I just want to take you to take one second and uh, read with this me on the, on the board here. Imagine risking everything to support those you love without any guarantee that you, that you will be able to help them out. And this is an issue that we want to address. And I, we believe that H2A can help us with that. So why Yuma County? As you know, we wake, we wake up every morning and every winter we know that we are the lettuce capital of the world. We produce over 90% of lettuce, citrus, and vegetables for the entire United States and most of the world during that period. There's over 230,000 acres of grown crops each year, 22 coolers, 10 salad packers, and over 1,000 loads come out of our fields every single day to be distributed. That takes a lot of skilled labor. According to the Department of Labor, there's over 22,000 skilled workers required just to pick the fields. That does not include trucking, labor in the coolers, or the processing centers. So why San Luis? A Customs and Border Patrol on April of 2022 reported over 200,000 cro illegal crossings or asylum seekers. Of those, over 1,000 of those were in Yuma County alone. If, we're, if we are able to just educate some of these asylum seekers and give them a viable option to come over and work, that can make a, a big difference in not only their lives, but their families. Illegal crossings are expected to increase in 2022 and 2023, and there's no formal assistance in place to guide them and give them their options. So what other issues do we have? If immigrants crossing over have not been going to our fields, that has fallen by over 80%. They seek either federal assistance or seeking other jobs. Local nonprofits in our region have discontinued it due to lack of federal help. But the issue is 75% of our labor in workforce, they are immigrants. We need them to help us pick these fields. And it's not just agriculture. In the United States, according to the Department of Labor, there's over 11 million job openings throughout the United States. And the H-2A program can help build some of these jobs. So what are we targeting and what we need your help with? Campesinos Sin Fronteras and, and other nonprofits no longer offer some of these, like I said, due to lack of federal assistance and the craziness that we'll be, be discussing here shortly. There's lack of collaboration between San Luis, Arizona and San Luis, Sonora, Mexico, and just between the two governments. There's lack of industry support due to the complexity of H2A regulations. John will touch up on these shortly, but there's over 209 statutes that agriculturalists, farmers, and industry leaders have to abide by to allow people to come over and work for us. And we would like, also like to target and set up a centralized resource center to guide these asylum seekers and illegal aliens to help them with the crossing over. So we've covered a lot of what the issue is and what are some of the opportunities, but there's also significant barriers to getting into the H-2A program that currently exists. One of these barriers is actually the amount of money and time it takes for employers to even get their jobs certified and get ready to even try and seek workers. As you can see here, we have a list of a lot of the different types of fees. Total cost per worker is about $20,000. That's a lot of money to invest in just one worker, especially if you don't have the assistance to understand the program you're getting into. Now, on the applicant side, the workers themselves are also faced with significant fees, especially for someone that is unemployed and looking to support the family. You can see here there's a filing fee, a consulate fee, the travel costs, just trying to navigate the system, 
especially on the uh, Mexican side of the border where they have to figure out how to get to the consulate in Nogales from San Luis. But all these costs come out to about $660 per worker plus travel costs, and that doesn't even account for the time and effort that needs to go into it, which could be 60 to 90 days just before they know if they're actually gonna be able to get employment. Now, this process involves many federal agencies. And I don't know about you in the audience, but I don't think any of you like trying to navigate or deal with so many federal agencies. I know I don't. As you can see, we've got state agencies, Department of State, Customs, Border Protection, Consulates. You know, all of this information is available, but it's not going to be in, in the worker's native language. And just as an example, I've got a flowchart here, and I've given you all a copy as well. This shows how complicated the system can be. Not only do you have to try and figure out how to navigate this, but you have to do it all on your own. I spent two hours trying to put myself in that role, and I wasn't able to figure it out myself. And I'm an attorney and understand the law. It wasn't going to happen. Now, I'll turn it over to Raphael, and he'll give you some more information on how to summarize the process. Thank you, Esteban and John. I'm going to just give a quick overview. But as you can see from the charts, it's pretty complicated. And the, yes, there are challenges, but there's an opportunity to create a resource, a tool for these things to come together, because at the end of the day, there is a benefit. So the filing process is the farmer applies uh, for a domestic job order, and that's with the local workforce agency. Next, they have to apply for a temporary labor certification from the Department of Labor's Chicago National Processing Center. And there's a wait period. There's a time that they have to uh, deliberate whether to approve this or not. So then there's a determination made. This process takes about 75 days. It's estimated, that's the estimated time. The farmer then completes an H-2A visa petition. And so then, um, you know, we have uh, the workers that apply for the H-2A visa. As mentioned, there's cost involved in that site. Why Campesinos Sin Frontera? It aligns with their, your mission. You've done this before. We're looking to reestablish this as part of the resources that you provide. And so as part of your vision to advocate and create and foster long-term strategies and solutions, we believe this is one. So the proposed solution, this is a resource opportunity for Campesinos in Frontera to support both the employer and those seeking employment. And then the other opportunity is that it serves as a recruitment tool. Uh, Campesinos in Fronteras has an outreach arm, so it's already happening. This is just complementing what's already going on within the organization. There is funding available. Startup costs, we estimated at $250,000, and we've identified funding sources that would support this initiative. So promoting the solution, because we, if we have something that's going to work and, and it's going to be implemented, we have to get the word out. Print, radio, TV, social media. Uh, our tagline is, tu puedes entrar legal. Because most of the times, folks that are paying for folks to get them to the border are looking across illegally. We're creating a pathway for legal entry. We're also looking at uh, meeting with local leaders as part of the solution and promoting the solution, and then also promoting this at summits that are held there in the San Luis Yuma area, the Ag Summit. Again, any avenue to pursue uh, the communication of this opportunity. This is just a quick PSA that we could promote the program. Tú puedes entrar legal a los Estados Unidos para trabajar. Contacta a Campesinos Sin Fronteras para más información. So really quickly, you can enter illegally, legally to work. So contact Campesinos Sin Fronteras for more information. Quick, we're hoping this goes viral, social media, uh, personal contacts, and so we think we have an opportunity here to make a difference uh, on a number of fronts. 
So what is the nexus between H2A and asylum seekers? My great grandmother would have been asylum seeker. She was fleeing war, persecution. Our relatives have been killed or captured and sold as slaves down in the Yucatan Peninsula. So she was fleeing. She would have been considered an asylum seeker. Well, there's a chance she would have gotten denied. 420,000 applicants for asylum. And H2A, 446 in Yuma County. Of those, 70% of the asylum seekers got denied. She would have gotten denied. Chances are she would have not been allowed entry. But there's zero denials when it comes to H2A applicants. So the chances are better of getting access to work, getting access to a safe place here in the United States. So we think there's an excess between asylum seekers and that opportunity and H2A and the opportunities that that create for both the person seeking entry and the situation we have with workforce here in the United States. Don? And so we've got some uh, charts here and some data that we've been able to pull. And as you can see, the blue here represents the amount of asylum seekers denied. That is an increasingly large amount of uh, people that are being denied. And you know that's a very low success rate when you're trying to gain entry into a country. So why wouldn't we promote a different option? And so you can see here that the dark blue line is the number of H2A admissions. The gray line here, that's the number of interactions and apprehensions with the Border Patrol. It's easy to see there's a correlation. H2A goes up, interactions with the Border, border Patrol go down. So not only are we promoting a solution that's going to get workers into our fields and improve economic stability of the communities at the border, we're also going to be improving security. We're also going to be freeing up our Border Patrol to do better things. Raquel. So board members, in conclusion, our main goal here is to educate, mentor, and promote legal crossings into the United States by reducing asylum seeker crossings. This can be beneficial not only to them and their families, but also our local agricultural economy in Yuma County. Improving quality of life and economic standing for both sides of the border should be of utmost priority for both of us. These are just two quotes. Uh, I just want to read one of them to you. This is from an actual H-2A worker uh, in Florida. Crossing illegally, one of the men in my group was bitten by a snake. There was nothing anyone could do but leave me there. Under H-2A, I don't have to risk my life anymore to support my family. When I am here, I don't have to be hide, live in hiding. This was by Jose Vasquez Cabrera, an H-2A uh, fruit picker out of Florida. I just want to thank you for your time, and uh, thank you. Thank you.